Hey everybody, it's Wendy with the Swamp Rabbit Inn, and thanks for tuning in this week. My special guest is Thomas Craven. Yes, he is the director of the Halawesco Citadel, powered by Arapahoe Resources Professional Cycling Team. Yes, and we're big fans, and you have a great team. You guys have done your training camps at our Swamp Rabbit Lodge, and it's been really awesome having your team there and getting to know the guys. And you've really got you've really got some characters, and you really have like this strong family bond with your team. Tell well, thank, us about that. Thank you. I mean, it, it's it's uh, it's sort of been a dream for me to be able to actually pull together a, a band of guys like this. Yeah. Uh, you know when. Both myself and Rich and George all started. The cycling was there were no real coaches or or organizations to get you started, and so you sort of fell in with maybe a mentor or a dad or something like really? that. Really? So when you guys were all racing? Oh yeah, yeah. back no, in the that, day. That was nothing. No, really? No coaches. Nobody. Wow. Had. So that's sort of how we started the team. Was uh, you know Rich and George were able to get the the money and the sponsors and stuff, but they needed somebody. To be that guy, and yeah. luckily they contacted me, and and uh, I was you know in in between doing different things, and right. thought it would be a great opportunity, and and they had a lot of faith in me, and and uh, and we've just been rolling down the road since then. Yeah, you've I think you've created some magic there too. You know, I mean, when I pop in, when you guys are staying at the space, I mean, everybody's just so comfortable around each other. It just you have like real good cohesion. Uh, that's that's a big part of it. I mean, yeah. the, the, the guys are all talented cyclists uh, in one one regard, but the big thing that draws me to everybody is personality, uh, the ability to get along. I mean, yeah. we're, we travel all over all over the place, and if you're you know not fun to be around, I, I don't want to have you <laughs> around me. So so it, it's there's a lot of stress, there's a lot of fun, uh, and if if you don't fit in you, know, you just it, yeah it, you just go away yeah okay cool I love that so you started your season tell us about the spring season and how the team is doing we've all been watching them on Twitter hey Lewis how are you thanks for watching um, yeah we we follow the team for sure but like tell us what's what's happened so far and what's ahead with the team well you know last time I saw you was at our training camp so uh, that was back in January, I think. And yeah, and they were headed to yeah. Columbia. So the guys went down to Columbia, uh, South America, not South Carolina. And that's where Rich and George have their factory oh, for yeah. the clothing. Yeah. So Looks like know. they were well supported, too. It yeah. looks like the fans came out. Man. There was there was a gazillion people there. Wow. I, I unfortunately didn't go to that trip. I had back surgery right before that's that. Right. So, that's right. Yeah. So I was down and out, but I was able to put uh, Radisha, was able to take uh, TJ, did well. And the sprints, uh, Murphy and those guys, they didn't, they didn't really, you know, pull it out. But it was the first races, and getting that timing down, it's always, it's always hard to do. Yeah, yeah. Now you mentioned TJ, and TJ and I have kind of formed this special bond. I just, I really admire him. He's such a high vibe kid, and and he's an artist. So he and I just connected, and I loved his. Um, his astronaut, like peace sign astronaut that he did for his nephew, I believe it was a mural. And I was like, wow, I need an astronaut at the Gotta lodge. Because the lodge is like Jetson mm -hmm. theme and, and I just love his like high vibe thing and everything about him. So he actually made a piece for me and it will go in the lodge, but I couldn't part with it right away. I just wanted to enjoy it for a while. So it's like right in my room and I see it like every day. And I named it Quantum Leap. Nice. I don't know what he calls it, but I named it Quantum Leap. And so it's just like these relationships just are so meaningful. Yeah, and TJ, you know, he came to the team after being uh, sort of entwined in the European scene on the, uh, on the BMC team. Yeah. And we sort of brought him out. And, mm -hmm. and uh, as soon as he became involved with us, that personality started to come out. And I think he, he felt like it was suppressed for so long. Really? Being, living in Europe and uh, being on a team where he had to cut his hair and, oh my gosh. and not have a personality. So it, it, it's been great to have him. You know, yeah. he's, a, he's a nut and, <laughs> uh, and we all love him and, and the personality and it, it changes when, when he's around for sure. Yeah. I mean, the, the vibe that he brings uh, is, is is like uh, like nobody else, you know. And what's interesting is, we're at this race in France, 
and you know when we're what I do is I drive the car behind everybody and I got the race radio and I find out when people are needing water or they drinks or food or they need to drop off clothing or they have a flat and typically they announce everything a number you know like your Hal Wesco number 136 and he's a flat he's got mm -hmm. a flat or something and we were in the race in the middle of France all of a sudden I get over the radio comes uh, Al Wesco Citadel, TJ needs a water, needs water. So TJ, we so, all just know who he so is. Everybody knows who he yeah. is, and that, that never happens. He, the He's only, only branded people himself. Exactly. It's amazing. I think he is a very exciting addition to cycling. I think he is he is what cycling needs right now. Mm -hmm. Just an iconic figure who's fun and happy and very high vibes. So. And he sends it. That's I his, love that's it that he's thing. on your team. Yeah, yeah I cool. love it. And he does send it. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's going to be just an exciting season. Tell us what's next. Now you were just in France. So yeah, the, after Colombia, we uh, had a little time off and then we were basically prepared to go to France. So we were over there. The guys are still in Europe. Uh, we've got a motorcycle going back. <laughs> we have a motorcycle uh, pulling a trailer uh, of pallets. Uh, so, uh, so we went over to Europe. We were based in the Normandy region. Uh, we rented a house over there. Had uh, the Euro riders there, plus a few of the Americans. And we did uh, the Tour of Normandy, which was a seven-day race. You know, 200 Ks every day. Wow. Uh, we won the first stage. Uh, held the jersey for four days. Had a lot of near misses. And uh, it, was, it was great. Great for you know to step right off the plane and do that. Yeah. Uh, did a couple more one-day events. Uh, they weren't quite as good, but uh, you know, rain, mud, eating cow poo all day. It's, it's, it's very, very hard. Yeah. And then direct into uh, the Circuit Ardennes, which is uh, in a different region of, of Europe, closer to you know, right on the Belgian border. So we're near Luxembourg, okay. right right above Paris, uh, and so that's where all the big races are this week. Went this with week the, with the Ardennes oh, series. I have family you know, in Luxembourg. Yeah. Go watch them and go support <laughs> Holoesco Citadel. Yes. So then the, all those races are, are were last week. We won a stage there. Okay. Uh, and then we had another uh, little bit of a break, and the guys are in Croatia right now. So I came home because you know I've got a family and yeah, uh, you, you have, know I yeah, get tired. And you have a desk yeah, at exactly. an office here that you yeah. yeah. So people can um, stop at the Hincapi office and get the jerseys, right? The oh yeah, team for jerseys sure. Yeah, we, and, they're online. Uh, yeah. You can get uh, the rider cards online as well. So a lot of people right. like to collect uh, like football card type thing. So you can download those on there. We have a, a spot on the website where you can actually buy all the team gear. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, I'm always down there too. So we'll, we'll, I'll give you a tour of the uh, service course and show yeah. you what, what we got. Yeah, and you'll, I mean, you'll see, like, George and Rich sometimes yeah, are in there. there I mean, the time, it's, yeah. it's a family there, too, in their office at the Hincapi Sports Wear headquarters. Yeah, Is that what you I'd call, call it? Yeah, I'd call it that. Yeah, yeah, yeah in Greenville. <laughs> okay, cool. Just kind of right off the Swamp Rabbit Trail. So, um, where, like, what ends the season? Uh, so, we, after the guys come back from Croatia, we are doing some local races. We race up in Spartanburg. Okay, on, great. Uh, next Friday. Okay. Down in Athens, Georgia. Oh yeah, the Twilight. The, the Twilight race Good. on Saturday. All right. And then we have a crew that leaves out to Redlands, California, which is one of our favorite races. Uh, and we fly out there. We compete there for four, I guess it's five day race. And then uh, a little bit of a break, switch out some riders and some staff. And it's uh, the tour of California yeah, sponsored by great. Amgen. Great. So that's a, that's a real big sort of highlight of the year for us because that has a lot of uh, World Tour riders, sprinters, Sagan will be there. Yeah. And Cavendish may not be there at this point. Uh, UPS <laughs> delivering. All, all the stars will be there, and so it's a good, good opportunity for our team uh, to see where we sort of stand against the big guys. Yeah. Uh, and it's a real privilege to be honored and or honored to be invited to that race. Uh, there's not very many domestic teams that, that go to it, so, right. so it's, a, it's a big deal. All right, very good. So, Thomas, how did you get into cycling? Tell us your mm, story. Cycling. <laughs> yeah, uh, that addictive thing we yeah. all love. Hey, Wally, hey, Joanne, how are yeah, you guys? So, somehow it crawled into me. I don't know what, what happened. But, uh oh, how uh, old were you? Uh, you got the bug. 15 years old, I okay. think. So what it was is my dad was into uh, bike riding. You know, they did some tours and things across North Carolina. With, okay. uh, with a guy named Ken Putnam who has a bike shop still in Winston-Salem called mm. Ken's Bike Shop. Mm. And, you know, I started riding, started riding to soccer practice, uh, and we had like a, a big race that was in Winston-Salem called the Haynes Park Classic that Ken actually promoted. 
and we had some riders stay there, uh, sort of like a host housing situation. So, At your house, yeah, growing so, up, oh cool. So a guy named Ian Jackson and Paul Pearson and Jeff Rudder, those guys all came down, and you know I was 15, and you know I was like, well, this is stupid or yeah. whatever, and hung out with them. They Did were, they shave their legs? They shaved their legs, <laughs> washed bikes outside, glued tires. Yeah. Uh, complimented my mom and dad on how cool they were, and uh, yeah, you know, 15. My, and my yeah. mom great made great food and stuff for them, and. They, they would stay for like two weeks every year. Uh, and then I started riding more, you know, skipping practice and going for a bike ride longer. And then uh, tried my first races. And, and uh, ever since then, it's just been sort of cool. part of my life. What kind of bike were you riding back then? Uh, originally I had a Peugeot. Yeah. It had little, little wheels on it because I was a small person. And then graduated to a Raleigh Grand Sport. All right. Uh, which was made in England with 531 tubing and the Carlton factory. Okay. And then I bought myself a Melton frame, which was uh, a custom made frame by a guy that lived in, uh, I guess it was Ohio at that point. He ended up making frames for uh, the national team. Okay. And Ken actually learned to make frames with him. So it was, it was you know, a, bit of, a bit of stuff, all campy back then. Man. Yeah. I was a big Campanola guy until, right. uh, until probably the mid 80s and then I switched to Shimano and mm -hmm. I've, I've been like mostly a Shimano guy since then. Okay and then you race for Schwinn and... So I raced for a couple different teams so I, I started I guess you know I went to college for a little bit and decided mm -hmm. I really wanted to give my cycling career a, a chance. Okay. So I bugged out of there with my parents uh, blessing uh, as long as I did something with it. Yeah. Uh, I gave myself a little timeline a couple years to actually pull it off and uh, went to Florida, uh, met my wife down there, and then uh, we actually started traveling and doing racing. And I was on a team sponsored by a bike shop called Outspoken Bike Shops in South Carolina. Yeah, in Greenville. Yeah, I mean in Columbia. Columbia, yeah. I know they're still Outspoken. Still, going. still there, yeah. So it's we a good were the, bike shop. We were the first first team out of there, and uh, we just you know did our thing. We were like vagabonds driving around and and staying on people's couches and homes yeah. and. You know, did did a couple big laps of the of okay. the country, and then we, uh, uh, in my timeline, I, I decided I needed to be a pro by a certain date, and okay. so I just made the introductions and kept pestering those guys, and I ended up uh, going professional for the Schwinn team. Okay. And they were sponsored by Wheaties, so that was a big big turning point because uh, there was a, a lot of big races that we would race. We got to go down to South America and wow. and won won some events down there, and then. Ended up winning the first stage of the Tour de Trump, so I've got this great picture on my Facebook page of uh, me, you know, meeting Donald Trump as a non-president. <laughs> awesome. So, so he actually <laughs> That's sponsored the race. Item. Yeah, it is. I, so it's, it's a funny picture, you know. So it's one of my one of my faves. But uh, I'd love to see it. I'll, I'll, I'll got it. I've got it somewhere. Well, you have yeah, it. Oh of my course. gosh, we're gonna get to see it. But uh, <laughs> but it was. You know that, and then I raced for Seven Eleven the next year, which was okay. their, which was America's team at that point. They've yeah. been around for ten years. You know, the first real U.S. team in the Tour de France, and uh, all those things. So, I mean, I, I've had a, had a great you know run in, in professional cycling. How old were you when you got into professional cycling? Uh, I guess I was twenty three. Okay. Yeah. What uh, what advice would you have for all those young cyclists out there? You know, have dreams of. Uh, Doing this, doing uh, professional. Basically, basically, you've got to, you know, just comes down to riding your bike. Uh, yeah. You know, all the power meters and coaches and whatever it is, you know, it, it's it's how you ride your bike and learning to ride with people, learning to race, uh, is, and being able to talk you know, are, are all parts of, you know, what a cyclist should be. So okay. uh, it's not all about the numbers, uh, even though some people will tell you that. Uh, I think it's a, a lot about having a nose for the finish line. Okay. All right, knowing how to network and yeah, meet the right people exactly. and get in front of the right yeah. people. Good. Mm -hmm. All right, like anything in life. Really. Exactly. Yeah. So, how long have you been in Greenville? We've been here for five years. Okay. Yeah. What do you What do you What would you say to people out there who have never been to Greenville that love cycling? What do you think about this area for right, cyclists? I mean, it's, it's it's hilly. Yeah, yeah so, it is. You get in shape. Yeah, it's a it's it's a beautiful road. I mean, it reminds me a lot of where I grew up in Winston Salem. Okay. Same size city, but you know Greenville has so much more going on right now. I mean, they've got the restaurant scene, the roads, uh, the actual elevation changes. Uh, mm -hmm. So for a professional cyclist or, or just anyone that wants to get better, I mean, there's group rides, there's people, there's there's 
you know, uh, resources to be able to We have to a learn. culture yeah. of cycling exactly. here yeah. in Greenville. We've developed it. Mm -hmm. um, it's, I guess it started with the trail maybe, and then the pros, George moved mm -hmm. here, and you know, just kind of saw the landscape was great for training. Yeah. And it's just grown and grown and grown. So I would say we are a cycling city. And, it's, sure. and cycling friendly. I mean, that's, yeah. that's the big thing is like, uh, even when I go home, to be with my dad or something and go for a ride, you know, I get yelled at and thrown something thrown at me every time. And I'd say, knock on wood here. You yeah. Know, Gr Greenville's been very nice to me and that I've only gotten, you know, accosted maybe twice. Okay. You know, a few so, dogs yeah. every now and then. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. So come to Greenville and see what the pros love about our cycling here. Thank you, Thomas, you so bet. much for being here. Yeah, and it's awesome. thanks for bringing your team to our lodge. Well, thank you for uh, providing us. I mean, the, uh, as we've talked about before, the, the lodge is great for us and that yeah. uh, it's got all the beds, it's got the kitchen, it's got the great location. Yeah. Uh, it's, it all works out well. So as a group, uh, it, it's perfect you know awesome that's I wanna, exactly I, I know it's exactly <laughs> what i wanted to create and someday you will live yeah. there hopefully. <laughs> all right thanks everyone for watching take care